Do you ever wonder where Rice Krispie treats come from? It's one of America's favorite treats, but we never get to hear about the folks behind growing this delicious dessert. My name is Matthew Sliger, and I'm proud to say that I'm a third generation Rice Krispie treat farmer. My granddaddy was a Rice Krispie treat farmer, my daddy was a Rice Krispie treat farmer, and I'm just happy to be carrying on the family legacy and tradition of snapping, crackling, and popping out these delicious treats. The most rewarding part of being a Rice Krispie Treat farmer is certainly harvest. The hard work we put throughout the entire crop year is represented in these delicious little crispy marshmallow treats. The most demanding part of being a Rice Krispie Treat farmer is in the spring when we prepare to put in a new crop. We only seed with high quality Rice Krispie cereal and then let nature run its course. Rice Krispie Treat farming is not for everybody. Me, I was born to do it. Mm. Now, via Skype, we have Matt Sliger from Rice Farming TV. How are you doing, Matt? Doing really well, Rob. Good to be with you. How are you doing? Good. You look like a NASCAR driver. I am a NASCAR driver. I'm all branded. <laughs> what all you got there? Well, I've got my Rice Farming TV hat. That's my YouTube channel that I do. And I've got my RFD TV golf polo. This is my business polo. So since I'm back on RFD TV, I thought I'd wear it. And I'm also using my Shark Farmer podcast boxer briefs right now. Can't see those. I think you mispronounced thong. <laughs> Is that, did I? <laughs> hey, it's your merchandise, not mine. You tell That's me. Right. And where the hell's my polo shirt at, by the way? Yeah, you guys get all the goods. <laughs> Apparently only the talent gets the polo shirt. So good job, Matt. Matt, well, we hey, were watching some of your, uh, your YouTube. I love that video where you... You pay homage to one of the most underrated people in agriculture, the Rice Krispie Treat farmer. Well, they just don't get enough coverage. I mean, everyone enjoys Rice Krispie Treats, not just during Halloween. It's a year-round treat, so we need to give respect where it's due. Hey, so I, I'm glad you appreciate that, You're too. preaching to the choir, brother. I tell you what. I knew it. <laughs> so tell, knew me it. About, tell me about that video. I guess the first question I have, does, has anybody taken that seriously? I don't think so. I imagine <laughs> yes, though. I imagine yes. No one commented and say, wow, I had no idea. Oh, I guess actually some people did, but I just took it sarcastically. I never considered that they were being maybe totally uh, honest and not knowing. <laughs> but uh, I did get a lot of comments where people said, do you know you probably just fooled a, a great deal of Americans? I, I think there's some high percentage that, that the general public thinks... Uh, Chocolate milk comes from brown cows. So, I mean, there is certainly the audience out there who might have got confused on that. That was such a well-done video. I mean, the production, the humor, it was just perfect. Tell me how difficult that was to do. It was a little bit difficult in that I wanted to film the Rice Krispie Treat plants right before the rice plants had started heading out, before they started going into the reproductive phase. So it was midsummer. The rice plants were tall. I was standing in a flood irrigated rice field. It was about 98 degrees Fahrenheit outside. And after about 20 minutes, the Rice Krispie treats started falling off the, the skewers that I had them um, standing on because the marshmallow was melting in the hot, hot heat. So I only got, I only got about 20 marshmallows on the sticks, even though I prepared or I'm sorry, uh, 20 Rice Krispie treats on sticks out there, even though I had 100 prepared. So the 20 around me are real. Everything in the background was just added digitally in post-production. Is it really? Because I've watched it. Because I wondered. Because there's so many. So I really looked. And I was looking to see if you could see, you know, like that digital thumbprint that it was superimposed. You, you did a really good job at that. I couldn't tell. Well, that's movie magic, my friend. And just like you couldn't tell they were fake, some people think the whole charade is true too, right? So... We'll see. It just—it was a good video to bring attention to rice farming in my channel. Um, it was a really fun video to do, so I'm glad you enjoyed it, and a lot of people have. Okay, how long have you been doing the YouTube videos? Um, for about three years now. Okay, I'm gonna I'm gonna admit something that's probably not gonna make me look very bright, but before your YouTube came out, I didn't know rice was grown in California. 
Do not feel bad, Rob. Do not feel bad at all because a lot of Californians don't know that rice is grown in California. Only around 500,000 acres of rice are grown in California, and it's a very concentrated area in the northern Sacramento Valley, about an hour north of Sacramento. So it's a, a really small area of the large state, and not that many acres of it are planted. Although it is a premium quality rice, anyone in the United States who, ever, who has ever had a sushi roll very, very high probability that that rice came from California. Okay. Well, you're growing the rice then that goes uh, on the sushi, not necessarily the, the white rice that, that we're getting in the uh, grocery store. Well, if it's, if it's premium, medium grain, Cal Rose, then you can find it in the grocery stores as well. That's, that's for sure. California rice has got to love you. I mean, you have made an image, not just for yourself, but for that whole industry out in that state. I was at a grower meeting the other day, and a, a, a grower came up to me who I never met before in my life. And he said, oh, hey, Matthew, as if he knew me only through my videos. And I go, oh, how are you doing? And he said, miserable. You're making me miserable because my 80-year-old mother is watching your videos and asking me if I've done all the repairs and the field <laughs> prep that you, uh, you were doing in your videos. And I, and I say, Mom, I'm so, we haven't had time to do that sort of stuff. We've been working on other things. I just told him, hey, tell her you've got different soil types so it doesn't really translate, even that's, though we're only 30 miles away. That's good advice. That's really good advice. Uh, you have another yeah. video you just released not too long ago where you've got a, uh, a four-wheel drive tractor and it's got these giant steel tires. What was that about? Well, that's all about straw decomposition or incorporating it into the soil where we're, of course, we've harvested the rice in September, October, and we're trying to manage our straw. And that tractor that you uh, brought up is a what we refer to as a stomper tractor. So we'll have a flooded rice field with the straw still in the field, and that stomper tractor will mix the straw in with the, the mud. And over the winter, with the straw resting there, it should decompose, giving us a clear field to work with in the springtime for a new crop. Plus, it looks really cool. Yeah, that's another cool thing about California rice. We do have a couple tractors and implements that are very unique to California rice, that being one of them, uh, another being a bank out wagon, a self-propelled grain cart that we use during harvest. And so when I post my harvest videos, a lot of people get a kick out of watching those things run. Matt, I watch your videos. I know a lot about agriculture. I've been around it my whole life. I deal with farmers every single day on the radio, but I watch your videos because I've never seen rice farming before. Are you surprised that so many farmers are watching your videos? Well, I, I don't, yeah, I suppose so. It's, it's really cool. I guess there's a lot of corn and soybean farmers out there who just want to see something else being farmed. Um, I think farmers are interested in what other farmers are doing, whether it's in the same commodity or, or not just to get tips and advice and see what type of equipment and technology are, is out there. And I, I mean, what you're doing, Rob, is so special and, and all the YouTube farmers out there and, and, and farmers on social media, it's great because we're not really represented in all that many seg segments in media. And so I think a lot of farmers are watching farmers on YouTube because there's not really much other of a place to do that. Matt, where can people find you on social media? Well, anything Rice Farming TV, you type it in, whatever social media platform you prefer. I usually work most on YouTube, so just type in Rice Farming TV on YouTube, but I've got a website, Facebook, Twitter, Instagram, whatever you want, Rob. Matt, you've done an incredible job of not just promoting the rice industry in California, but promoting agriculture. You're putting a good face on it, and I really appreciate what you're doing, and I hope you keep doing it for a long time. Thank you, Rob Sharkey, and right back at you. You're doing great things. God bless you, sir. You're looking gorgeous as ever. You know, it's probably better when we're not nice to each other. You know what I'm saying? Oh, are we still on the air? Unfortunately. <laughs> I know I'm going to complain to someone about not getting a polo shirt. Uh, don't complain to me, buddy. <laughs> <laughs> Matt Sliger, Rice Farming TV. Thank you so much. Thank you. If you have an interesting or entertaining video or picture, and you think the world should see us, Drop us a line, www.sharkfarmer.com. While you're there, check out What the Farm podcast. 
and the one that started it all, the Shark Farmer Podcast. Catch me Monday through Friday at Rural Radio Sirius XM channel 147 at 4 p.m. Eastern, 3 Central. And follow me on Twitter, Instagram, and Facebook.